As I spoke about in my first video, I've been in a bit of a hobby slump recently. I don't get to play as much as I used to, if at all, so my hobby is changing from playing to painting, and I've been at a bit of a loss in regards to what I should paint next as I enter this new phase of my hobby. Then one day it hit me, Lord of the Rings. I've always loved the world, and it's how my journey into Warhammer started, back when the Battle Games and Middle Earth magazines came out. I had read the books as a child, and was instantly drawn to the fantasy world filled with elves, dwarves and orcs, and the epic journey that the Fellowship went on. So 11 year old me was extremely excited for the films to come out, and then to realise that I could collect my own Lord of the Rings models, and have my own adventures. Well, I was sold. I mean, just look at the advert. The Lord of the Rings, Battle Games in Middle Earth. Relive the battles and adventures of the Fellowship with this tabletop strategy game. Collect and paint the characters. Learn how to model the landscapes and recreate the battle scenes. Start now with your first information pack gaming guide. Four paints, a paintbrush and 12 goblin warriors. Lord of the Rings, battle games in Middle Earth at newsagents now for £1.99. 20 years later, I still love the world and rewatch the films at least once a year. I guess Middle Earth never leaves you. Going back to where I started seemed like the perfect way to reboot my hobby and also matched up with a well-loved Hobbit's tale. There and back again. Why don't you let me know what first got you into the hobby by leaving a comment below. I'd love to read all of your stories. I knew I had some Lord of the Rings kits in my pile of potential and I found an old fellowship set which is a fitting way to restart my journey into Middle Earth. I've never had a complete fellowship and had always struggled to find the time or the justification to paint them as my old playgroup's focus was on other game systems, which meant I always had something else to paint. I grabbed the Fellowship set and got to work building. These are really simple sculpts with most only being a single piece. I'm not really a fan of building miniatures if I'm honest. I find it a chore, especially with how fiddly some model kits are now. I generally enjoy the painting part the most and find it more relaxing, so the simplicity of this set was perfect. After some basic mold line cleanup and attaching them to their bases, we were ready to prime. I loaded up the models on my trusty scrapwood spray stick, no need for that citadel spray handle here, and I took them outside to prime. I do have an airbrush, and normally use that for priming, but for such a small batch of models, a spray can was quicker and easier. I mounted the models on some homemade paint stands from scrap wood, and then I was ready to paint. Now, as I haven't painted properly for a while, I wanted to keep these relatively simple to help ease me back into things. I didn't want to spend weeks painting them, and risk them ending up as yet another unfinished project but I did want them to look good. I decided to follow the box art colours as closely as my paint collection allowed, removing something for me to have to think about and worry about, and therefore removing another obstacle to me getting this project finished. I'm still trying to build up my hobby motivation slowly, so anything that helps make the process easier is a win-win. I followed the basic base, shade and layer method, which allowed me to get them to a good standard in a relatively small amount of time. I found the scale of the hobbits particularly difficult and decided to leave the faces quite simple in the end. I used to be able to paint faces to a much better standard, so that's definitely a skill I want to build up again over the coming months. Gandalf is my favourite sculpt in this set, so I saved him until the end as I wanted to put a little more effort into him and try to push myself on one or two techniques so I can start improving my painting skills again. I wanted to go for a more blue-grey on his robes than the standard grey colour that you often see. To do this, I started with a base coat mix of 50-50 dark blue and mid-grey. I then dry brushed that up with the same colour mix, but increasing the amount of grey with every stage. This gave me a nice value sketch to establish my highlight areas, along with a deep blue-grey base tone for the shadow. It also gave me that slight scratchiness that you get from dry brushing, which I really wanted here, as it would help convey texture and make it look like cloth. To blend those layers together and smooth out the transitions, I mixed up a deep blue-grey glaze using Citadel Paints and Vallejo Glaze Medium. This was applied in a couple of thin layers and really did what I wanted it to, and I'm very happy with how the cloth came out. I ended up firmly being bitten by the painting bug again during this process, so I decided to go back into all the models with some finishing touches and final edge highlights, just to help define the transitions between the different items of clothing and help to boost the contrast. To base the models, there really was only one choice. This Fellowship set is modelled on the time that they spent inside the Mines of Moria, so I wanted a dark, stony rubble base to represent the flaws of a long disused mine. I grabbed some grim dark city rubble from the Geek Gaming Scenics range. This had the perfect blend of small and large rubble in a nice dark tone, which gave me the effect I was going for. This was my first time using Luke's products and they definitely lived up to the hype. It was as simple as applying some fast drying basing glue and dipping the model into the base ready mix. 
a quick shake off and you're done. I'm super impressed and will definitely be trying out more of the range in the future. In fact, I'm planning to build a little Moria display base for this set using some other Geek Gaming products. So if you want to see that video, please subscribe and click the bell icon so you can be notified when it goes live. As my first project in the new hobby space, I'm really pleased with the end result. It was fun to go back to my roots and re-enter the world of Middle Earth. I really enjoyed painting the models and I've already got my eyes on more models in the range. Also, it was fun to paint something of my own choosing without being driven by the date of an event or a game or something else at the end of it. Just painting for the sake of painting was fun. Don't get me wrong, I still love 40k and Age of Sigma. You can see that by the stack of things behind me. And I am going to feature that on the channel, so please stick with me. This year I'd really like to dip my toe into Marvel Crisis Protocol and Star Wars Legion, two of the other worlds that I love and have loved for a long time, so stay tuned for those. But let's cut to the chase, you want to see the final reveal right? So I'll leave you with that now, catch you in the next one. The Ringbearer is setting out on the quest of Mount Doom, and you who travel with him, no oath nor bond is laid to go further than you will. Farewell. Hold to your purpose, and may the blessings of elves, and men, and all free folk go with you. The Fellowship awaits the Ringbearer.